Hey y'all, it's Anime Cayman, and today I am gonna be live reacting to Yuno episode 18. And I'm gonna start this live reaction in 1 0 go! Because I love having one second countdowns. Huh. Wait, he's actually complimenting his boy. That is rarity. No shit! <laughs> I think Tokyo already knows that. Oh, actually, that Keiko detail was actually kind of unique. Huh? That's. Hmm. Good. Okay, that's kind of confusing, but I guess the time where he's at. Works differently, but okay. And that Keiko detail definitely was something we didn't know before, so that's pretty interesting. Whoa! Yeah, definitely Delagranto is different kind of world because you see that lizard creature. And it actually moved a bit fluid. It moved with a good amount of fluidity. You know, those fish do look kind of weird. That's true. You know, with the reflector device, he could probably practice his skills in survival. Yo, oh, this opening's epic! Okay. Alright, he's traveling the desert while we see him traveling the actual world simultaneously. Oh, an elf creature. Okay, and a dragon. Mm hmm. Huh. All right. I like the unique-looking locations. Although the animation there, where she did that, kind of looked a bit off. But maybe it's just a storyboarding issue. Everything else in the opening looks great, though. Wait, that looks like um, that chick in the photo. Oh yes, it's her. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming we're gonna have some cool action stuff then. So is there gonna be like a war going on in Delta Grando Granzo then? Huh. Looks like it. Or at least some kind of skirmish. <laughs> Wait, he's gonna actually slay creature Oh okay. Yo, I actually love this opening. It's better than the first one. Whoa. Okay. Forced to teleport. Hmm. Interesting. Hopefully the time gap isn't so large so that he can rely on his, um, so that his survival instinct skills are in good use. Huh. Oh! Yo, is it gonna end? Is it gonna die? Yo! Or not. <laughs> okay. Whew. At least Lady Luck shining on his side today. How would he climb the fuck back up? That's really the tr that's really the questions that matter to me the most. But fuck it. It's Taka, he probably has a lot of strength. Yes! <laughs> For a second I thought he would Oh. I mean, that hurt him, but it didn't look it. Did a lot of damage, though. <laughs> huh? So it must mean someone else is in danger, then. 
<laughs> well, let's hope she's someone reliable, though. Okay, he kind of looks a bit scary like that. <laughs> and funny at the same time. Kind of has like a creep face going on. Oh, she's cute. Oh, well, yeah, she kind of does look like a girl from episode one. Vowels, eh? Good start. Okay, so I guess it ain't um, anyone related to Keiko then. Oh, okay. Sally, that's a cool, cute name. Well, yeah, at the very least, it's better two than one because at least he has some company now because he probably, a lot of people would go insane just being by themselves in a world, crazy world, not knowing any details about it. And at least they're smiling so, and they're seemingly building chemistry with each other. So that's not, oh, sh Okay, for a second I thought she was going to point somewhere in the desert. At the very least, maybe they can suck up on water supplies, maybe food, or maybe some kind of pouch that can carry a good amount of resources. Oh, those look kind of adorable, the little cacti looking things. Hopefully it's someone that can give them some kind of weapon. You know, this was like an RPG where a house is by itself. And then to get items, someone just gets a pot and slams it on the floor and breaks it. Or they just open a treasure chest inside of a freaking house by itself. And they steal the owner's <laughs> shit. It's one of those stuff. Hmm. Huh. You know, on the outside, that house looks small, but on the inside, it looks huge and massive. Surprisingly. Oh, I mean, that's on him. He is sneaking down on someone's house without even knocking. He just straight up opened the freaking door, so. <clears throat> Imperial City, I'm assuming that must be where the chick with the mask in the opening is from the Imperial City. Oh! Not the best time of making a a sex joke, but okay, a sexual innuendo, but that is our Takia. Huh? Okay, I guess she That was easy! <laughs> That's on her, she just fainted. <laughs> I wonder if he's telling the truth or is he bullshitting on the whole peeing thing and just did it just to look at her naked body. You know. Oh, wait, then again, she is there too. Chip. Sailor, so. Oh, that is an interesting photo. Can't blame her, though. Elia was probably just. Thinking she was in danger and someone did enter your home randomly, I probably would have done the same shit too. But that's still sweet of her to apologize though. Oh. Hmm. Oh, he's not in good conditions though. Oh. Ah. 
I mean, in a way, it kind of is. It kind of is giving some kind of jewel to a girl, only this jewel is dependent on her lot. She depends on it on her lot. Oh! Oh my. That's pretty savage. Huh. The vessel. Oh. So could it be that chick with the blonde hair then? Did she, was she some kind of sacrifice? She may say impossible, but for Takia, we all know he is the protagonist, and the impossible for him is actually possible. And plus, we see him in the opening, too, so. <clears throat> I'm curious to see how he's gonna actually get through the Raffaello desert. Yo, that looks nasty! Oh, Lord! I mean, I guess I would eat if I was trapped in that world. I would just be like eating it slowly because it looks so fucking disgusting. Oh, the plot. I mean, the bad guys. Hmm. Okay. <sighs> Looks like they better stop companies. That's actually nice seeing him actually work on sword combat. But that's cool though, at the very least we're gonna see him put in the works. Okay, talk about up in the stakes. But in a way that's cool though. In the first episode you're already getting to feel the danger level being in Della Granta. Oh, psychic! Oh. I mean, hope for Takia's sake, like, I hope it's the same thing. <clears throat> oh no, she does. She looks pretty strong. Well, hopefully, she doesn't have some kind of coughing episode. But it is, and you know what, I really love this, actually <clears throat> bounces off of one of the previous episodes, if I remember, when he was trying to take those two people that, those two people that were trying to abduct Ayumi, his first instinct was to get a pipe. So it's, oh, so it's natural that Takya would be pretty skilled with the melee weapon. Wait, that looks like the chick? Oh. oh, so it's age. It's an age-related issue then if she says it's fate. Because they haven't quite yet... Because they mentioned Kana has a large enough lifespan, and her mother did too. And speaking of which, her sister kind of looks a bit like Kana's mother. Could it be? That's what I'm wondering. Man, so many questions here. And 
And why do the priestess look somewhat serious? Is it because she has a feeling that they're gonna go after her, the people from the Imperial City? Oh. Okay. So she wants to give it to Elia. Oh. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I like how he just makes it all dramatic. But that's a little sweet, though. We're actually seeing him and Salus actually bond. Forming a connection with each other. You... Oh, Lord! Oh, I'm assuming Elia's gonna show up here. Yeah, because we see it in the opening, too. I mean, I think she's got this. A bit lazy there in the animation, though, but... Oh! Let's hope she actually took it down. <laughs> I thought for a second she was screwed. But still, though, hopefully they increase the choreography levels in the future episodes. Wait, what? Damn, and that's when, right when we got to know her, too. Oh. Hmm. But then again, though... I can see why someone would be scared at the prospect of sacrificing themselves, but what Salius did is kind of a natural action. Because it's... Not all people are going to be willingly be like, you know what, yeah, I'll sacrifice myself for a large amount of people. At least, I wonder if that's what she's implying. Hmm. hmm. That sounds crazy, but... Aw, she's trying to warn him not to go. In a way, that's hella sweet. See, he's actually... Yo, you know what? I love her bravery, though. And in a way, this is actually pretty cool. Because Taka is going to have someone to talk to. And it could lead to hilarious instances or even like cool, cute moments too. You know, I like, I like this. And this is about, about Salus' character too. That she's, oh, she actually went back. I mean, I can't blame her, though. Or maybe she's just tired. Hmm. Maybe she's just a slow walker. In a way, though, I do kind of like how his first attempt wasn't successful, though, going into the desert. Considering he's inexperienced. Wait! She's... Oh, shit.
So she was actually still in the desert then. Was something fallen after Takia. That does say a lot about her characterization though. She's not gonna just give up on a friend. Even though it's at a great risk to herself. That's actually pretty cool. Oh! He better haul ass. I mean, I guess he can't haul ass because it's the desert, and if he runs, he could slip, but. Wait. So, does she have telekinesis abilities then? Nice! Huh. You know, I gotta say, that's actually the best sequence in this episode. Oh, the lips! I'm gonna use that spicy sequence as a thumbnail if YouTube allows it. <laughs> if, if, as in, if it doesn't, if it isn't above the memory capacity. Aww, it's hella cute. Okay, I'm going to use that as a thumbnail instead. Okay. Let's see the CD. Dun, dun. You know, I like the sound of this CD. They really helped the quality in the opening ED themes. I don't know why Ilya's in the ED theme, though, because... She was only there for like literally half an episode, so. Kind of a bit surprised on that. <laughs> Unless somehow her sister's gonna be involved in the plot, then I guess I could see why she could be there. I'm assuming that's the people from the Imperial City. That, that red haired chick, well, the one with the bandages covering her eye, I think that's gonna be Alia's sister. I just have a feeling, the resemblance. Because they wouldn't just mention her family if there wasn't a narrative purpose. At least I would think they wouldn't. You know? <laughs> Ryo Shoji. Oh boy. Going by this, we're probably going to see his ugly ass face in Delta, in Della Granta pretty soon. Or eventually. If not, I'm pumped up for that. Is there an after credit scene? The bond between parent and child. Oh, fudge. I mean, I guess I should have seen it coming. I don't think any of the episodes in the first season, in like the first uh, portion of the series had after credit sequences, but I was hoping for it, but you know what? Fuck it. I actually really like this episode. Normally in this episodes of this type, I'd be rating it like a 7.5 out of 10, which in my school is good. But because we had a kick-ass opening and a kick-ass ED, that is actually way better than the first opening ED of the series in my book. I'm going to rate this an 8.5 out of 10. Because for one, we made some nice plot progression. Because at the very least, Takia met Sayless, someone seemingly important. And then we were reduced to Ilya in this episode, and she died in the same episode. And additionally, even though we didn't get a lot of training with Takya in using a sword, at the very least, it seemed in like that little sequence, Ilya did teach Takya some basics of how to utilize a sword. So, at the very least, there was also progression from that standpoint, so that if we see Takya utilize a sword, at the very least, he was trained how to use it from someone that's competent in using that weapon. So, there were positive elements in this episode regarding that. 
And additionally, I felt the bond between Celeste and Takio forming this episode was hella sweet and adorable. And then additionally, aside from it doing pretty well from a story standpoint, I do like also how from that same standpoint there seem to be building some stakes because that the very least they built up that the desert is pretty dangerous, especially when there's sunlight. You really can't survive there. And I like how they're using that as a plot point because for Taki to find 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 some psychic psychite, he's gonna have to explore uh, that desert. So I like that because they increase the stakes while also mentioning yeah that fucking place is a dangerous as fuck. So that was pretty cool too. Giving us some narrative stakes for next week's episode. While also providing us a unique backdrop. Because in the previous episode of the series, it's been like in a town. And it's in their town. And I like how now we're going to get some variety in environments. We've had, we were, they were in like a, the woods for a good portion of the episode. And now they're going to be in a desert for another portion of the episode. And then going by the opening... If uh, there ha if there's gonna be things to do with the Imperial City, then they're gonna be in like some kind of fantasy futuristic looking city too. So I like that. It's gonna give the variety in the situations. It's gonna give the series a lot of variety in situations. So that's why I thought it did well from that standpoint. Sailors was a cool character, and that's then the only weakness was really the animation. It was pretty weak, but other than that, I liked everything else, and that's why I felt it was 